Let's talk blade steel. This is a replica saber. Um, it's long, it's sharp, and it's made out of carbon steel. Long, narrow blades for swords are going to have to be made out of carbon steel. The particular steel is dictated by the use, the budget, the owner's tolerance for maintenance. Carbon steel is high maintenance. What you're looking for in steel is a set of characteristics. You want a cutting edge that's sharp enough to do the job, but you don't want the cutting edge so sharp that it shatters. You don't want it brittle. There are a number of choices you can make that will impact the combination of hardness on the cutting edge and resilience of the overall blade and survivability. Carbon steel tends to offer a very good potential set of characteristics. And for a long weapon like that Western Saber that I just showed you, there really is no other choice besides carbon steel. Combat knives are a lot shorter and fatter from a relative ratio perspective than that long sword, long saber. Consequently, you have an additional steel option, that being stainless steel. Weapons grade stainless steel is not stainless. It will stain. It's not no maintenance. It's low maintenance. But the maintenance is one heck of a lot less than required for a carbon steel. Butterfly swords look a lot more like a regular knife than they do like that long saber. Relatively shorter, relatively wider. The fact is stainless steel is a very viable alternative for butterfly swords, which are commonly called butterfly knives. And most mass-produced butterfly swords are indeed made out of stainless steel. They're not made out of particularly good stainless steel, and they're not particularly well-designed, well-constructed, or well-heat-treated, but they are made out of stainless steel, so they're low-maintenance. Combat knives are a lot shorter and fatter from a relative ratio perspective than that long sword, the long saber. Consequently, you have an additional steel option, that being stainless steel. Weapons-grade stainless steel is not stainless, it will stain. It's not no maintenance, it's low maintenance, but the maintenance is one heck of a lot less than required for a carbon steel. Butterfly swords look a lot more like a regular knife than they do like that long saber. Relatively shorter, relatively wider, the fact is, stainless steel is a very viable alternative for butterfly swords, which are commonly called butterfly knives. And most mass-produced butterfly swords are indeed made out of stainless steel. They're not made out of particularly good stainless steel, and they're not particularly well-designed, well-constructed, or well-heat-treated, but they are made out of stainless steel, so they're low maintenance. The basic maintenance regime for a weapons grade stainless steel is to get it, clean it, wax it with Renaissance wax, which you can get on the internet. After you use it, get the hard debris off without rubbing them into the steel. And a couple of ways to do that are to tap the sword, rinse it off, maybe use a soft toothbrush. Once that's done, you're going to want to wipe it off with a damp cloth that has a non-acetic, non-astringent cleanser or detergent. And the best place to find that is usually the dishwashing liquids. Um, dry it completely, don't leave it wet. If you've got a carbon steel blade, you're going to have to leave it oiled in between use with sword oil. Let me get some sword oil. It's basically a variety of mineral oil. I mean, it feels oily. 
and it does attract dust, and once the dust gets on it, on your blade, then that increases the odds of corrosion. So a couple of top Western custom knife makers are now advocating going through the Renaissance wax regime instead of oil and carbon steel. I haven't tried it, but they're both really smart guys. Well, let's talk about the carbon steels now. Carbon steel is categorized three ways, low carbon steel, medium carbon steel, and high carbon steel. Toss the low carbon steel out. Medium carbon steel has 0.3% to 0.59% carbon. High carbon steel has 0.6% carbon or more. The medieval era practice swords would be made out of medium carbon steel, and that's unfortunately sharp. There are butterfly swords that are made out of ASI 1055 carbon steel. The 55 means it's got 0.55% carbon. It's a leader steel. It's something you can do hard contact practice with. Not that I want the responsibility or I'm going to recommend you go weapon on weapon or do abusive tests, but if I hypothetically were, and you were to do that regularly rather than to defend your life, then we'd be talking medium carbon steel. Everything Wing Chun wanted to come out with a training line of swords, and they asked Iron Man Steel to conduct some fairly expensive, abusive, and dangerous testing to see which carbon steel would be the most appropriate carbon steel for that intended use. The Forge came back with the conclusion it would be 9260 spring steel, uh, new and hammered. Why do you want spring steel to be new? don't use recycled spring steel. What's the hammering business? If you hammer a steel blade as part of the process, you're going to impact the molecular level construction of that blade. It's going to alter the crystalline structure in favor of improved strength characteristics. There are a couple of ways to do it. Um, a smith heats the steel, sticks it on an anvil, and takes a hand hammer and hammers it. Alternatively, they can use a power-assisted hammer. They can use a technique called hot drop forging, which is the same way that hammers are made. All of these add to the expense. And here in the U.S., so why should you be impressed by hammering? See how thick that is? That's about eight millimeters thick. That started out as a 15 millimeter thick piece of steel and they hammered it down to 8 millimeters. That's how it impacts the crystalline structure of the steel. So we were on the medium carbon steels, which were the heavy use. Let's talk about the difference between a racehorse and a plow horse. You don't want to take a racehorse and give them the duties of a plow horse. And you shouldn't expect the plow horse to perform the duties of a racehorse and win. When you're talking about a carbon steel blade that's intended to save your life, then you're not going to want a medium carbon steel. You're going to want a high carbon steel. And the typical high carbon steels used in sword making are AISI 1075 and AISI 1095. They can become truly outstanding weapons with an excellent blend between hardness and flexibility. However, to achieve that, they have to be properly heat treated with water quenching. Once you get into the weapons grade steels, a certain number of blades are going to crack during the quenching process. You, know, you heat the blade, you stick it in a vat of oil or a vat of water, you take it out, you rinse and repeat, whatever. This is a custom butterfly sword uh, made out of layered stainless steel. It's weapons grade. It was very expensive. And during the process of making this, I believe they broke three blades. So that's a pretty expensive thing to have happen. Blades are more likely to break if they're water quenched than if they're oil quenched. But when you're using 1075 or 1095, if you do not water quench, you will not optimize the blade's characteristics. You might as well just be using a medium carbon steel. 
There's tremendous resistance from the manufacturer. Also an extraordinary steel on the carbon steel side called D2. This is an everything Wing Chun flagship line, 14-inch uh, hybrid. It's made out of D2. D2 is a tool steel. That means it's another one of those steels frequently used to make dies and implements that cut other steel. It can be hardened up to an HRC of 64. It is the best carbon steel for Western knife making. It takes a fine edge and it holds it for a long time. There are a couple of downsides. The first one is the raw steel cost. It costs about three times as much as ordinary carbon steel. The second one is the difficulty working with it. It's very tough and consequently the forge spends an inordinate amount of consumables and an inordinate amount of labor to take the raw D2 into the blade shape. Uh, it's difficult to resharpen. It takes me about four to six times as long to resharpen a D2 blade as it does for me to resharpen a 440C blade by hand. You need to use a sapphire or a diamond hone to resharpen D2. A lot of people won't carry a D2 knife in the field because it's too difficult for them to resharpen. I happen to think it's worth it. If you're in law enforcement so you can take it to a professional sharpener, it's just extraordinary because you knock out that problem of the difficulty resharpening. Anyways, D2. And the Everything Wing Chun flagship line has a D2 version for each of their different blade shapes and lengths. D2 is just great. It's called semi-stainless because it's extraordinarily corrosion resistant for a carbon steel. You can 